hi guys welcome back to my channel and in this video i will be explaining the wiring uh, the connections the rpm the power rating and all of an alternator so as you can see here this is a 720 watts 60 amperes alternator with uh, the maximum voltage of 14.4 volts controlled by the regulator at the back of it and a usual uh, low voltage of around uh, 12 volts Okay, so guys, uh, this is the place where uh, the pulley is mounted, uh, on which uh, uh, the belt is mounted. Okay, and if you have, if you have to open it, then of course you will need a spanner and an Allen key. Uh, now, for those of you who have already tried uh, to open alternators previously, would know that it is really hard to open an alternator, especially from the pulley section. These are really, uh, really, really tight. I mean, so tight that I broke my Allen keys twice. So anyways, for this alternator, I will be cutting the pulley and the nut here with an angle grinder since it's not opening and I have to modify it into a self-excited alternator generator. So starting with the connections part first. Okay. So all the connections are at the back of the alternator. So first is the negative output now there are two cases for an alternator first is the electricity that is fed to the alternator which is going to excite the alternator and the second is the energy delivered or generated by the alternator that is extracted from the alternator so first the extraction part so uh, for the extraction part the entire body of an alternator is the negative actually except for these parts okay like uh, if I want to get uh, the negative out of an alternator I can place uh, the output for the negative over here or here or here or even on the pulley since it's metallic and it is connected to the body so it is also negative now the positive output terminal positive output terminal is uh, quite unique and different from the others the longest screw you can see the longest screw present at the back of the alternator is the positive terminal I mean uh, the positive output will come on this longest terminal and the negative output will come at the back of the alternator on the body of the alternator sorry okay so let's say that your alternator is running at really high rpm and you want to light up this incandescent 12 volts bulb so what you will be doing is you will connect one terminal of the bulb to the positive terminal of the alternator which is this long screw okay and the other terminal to the body of the alternator like here or uh, here which is going to be the negative okay and then your bulb will light up so this was the output part of the alternator now an alternator has two parts the armature and the rotor so first the rotor part as you can see here these are the teeth and these two are the slip rings to which the brushes are connected now the brushes feed electricity to this rotor or the field and the electricity that is fed to this rotor activates the electromagnets in between these two sets of teeth okay the upper teeth and the lower teeth set now let's say positive is given here and negative is given here so let's say that the upper set of teeth becomes the north and the lower set of teeth becomes the south so it is going to be somewhere like south north south north okay so this is a uh, quite an important part how beautifully the electromagnet is magnetizing the rotor poles the electromagnet is uh, placed horizontally and it is activating the magnets on the sides activating the poles on the sides and there is another important fact if we increase the number of teeth here like if we are going to reduce the size of one teeth uh, of each teeth then we can have more number of teeth which will mean more number of poles more number of poles means less rpm for the alternator to generate same amount of voltage and current so like if uh, your alternator was initially working at 
1400 rpm for generating 12 volts if we increase uh, the number of teeths here we can generate the same 12 volts at just 700 rpm now this is the part uh, the rotor part which takes in electricity from outside while the armature that i will be sharing after this is the part that will generate and produce electricity that we can use to light up halogens bulbs or recharge the connected battery that is exciting this rotor or field so guys now comes the armature part now the armature part of an alternator as you can see here there is a little bit uh, there is a lot of grease over uh, the armature winding so it is uh, barely visible I will clean it up for you at least clean it enough so that you can see what's I mean where is the winding okay okay it's really creased up now the armature winding is really thick as you can see and it is responsible for generating large amount of current and less voltage the voltage maximum voltage is only 12 volts to 14.4 volts while uh, the maximum current is up to 60 amperes which is regulated by the regulator at the back of the alternator the voltage the armature winding is in three phase and it is star connected and how I know that okay you can see here there are three wires this is the white wire this is the white wire and this is the white wire these are three now if it was delta connected it would only be three but if there is a fourth wire like you can see here this is the fourth white wire which is away from these three wires this is common of these three so uh, star has a common neutral point while these three are the phases with a phase difference of 120 degrees uh, now the three phase voltage that is generated by this alternator is rectified with the help of this three phase rectifier AC to DC converter and also there is voltage regulator mounted uh, with this uh, uh, rectifier to prevent the voltage from going beyond 14.4 volts which would of course otherwise harm the battery that is connected with the alternator since the batteries cannot go beyond 14.4 volts otherwise they will get damaged so for that reason it has voltage regulator and uh, you see this this is the slip ring part of the field winding or the rotor which i explained a few moments back for the rotor and uh, these are the two wires you see here red and blue these feed the brushes and the brushes are connected to the slip rings that feed the electromagnet of the rotor okay so guys that would be all about the rotor the field the connections and all thank you so much for watching this video if you have any queries feel free to ask them in comments and uh, this was the intro video i will come up with the practical electricity generation part in my next video thank you so much for watching it thank you